Now, the first thing I want to just lay the groundwork with is explain what is it about this digital revolution that is so powerful? And the way to understand that is people outside, now not all you are techies here, so I really want to get also talk to people about the fundamentals of this, but also people who are in the technology field. It's a good little refresher to remind yourself of some of these facts. There's a core law, they call it, essentially in, the, in Silicon Valley or in basic technology circles called Moore's Law. And this was essentially the understanding by about the 70s that engineers about every 18 months could figure out a way to get twice as many integrated circuits onto a chip, the same chip. And so what you essentially were able to do is essentially shrink the size of the, chi of the chip, boost the power of the chip, and drop the price. And this is essentially the juggernaut dynamic of Moore's Law. Now, what is doubling? It's a good, worth reminding ourselves what doubling is all about. So look, if you start out with doubling, the first time things double, all right, it's a double. It's getting a little bit of traction here. It's starting to be some interesting doubles. Oh, it's starting to pop up a little bit more, a little bit more. Interesting. Now it's starting to get some traction. Well, now it starts to double. It goes boom. And then the next double goes boom. And then the next double goes boom. It's through the ceiling. And the next one goes boom, four stories up. And then it's eight stories up. That's doubling. And as you get toward the end of these doublings, the increases in power get crazy. And so what's happened, essentially, in practical terms, is the first personal computer, some of you might remember this, back in 77, about 30 years ago, say we're taking a span here, one megahertz, which is essentially the unit of power of a computer, essentially in today's terms was 5,000 bucks. And then 30 years later, you could get a Dell, which is two gigahertz, or 2,000 megahertz, for uh, 1,000 bucks. So if you do the math on that, you essentially Computers are 10,000 times more powerful, or you can flip it around and say they're 10,000 times cheaper. Now, if, you did, if this happened in the car, if your car got you know, doubled or dropped in price in half every year, it'd be amazing, right? Well, this is it. This is what's so amazing about the computer industry. Now, this dynamic, by the way, is expected to go out for about 10 more years until we run into the shrinking gets so small, you start getting down to the atomic level of you just can't shrink it anymore, although there's even workarounds for that, they're thinking. So in practical terms, what happens is, actually, this is my new company, the little animated logo here of my uh, new company I'm working on here is Next Agenda. But anyhow, the point here is now in an iPad, you essentially have the power of what a mainframe was. So here's literally the facts. Is if you take, there's another way to measure uh, power of a computer is speed. So back in the 70s, 75, that same period where this Moore's Law started, you would get essentially a supercomputer. The biggest supercomputer at that time cost $31 million, and it went at that speed. It's called Megaflop. Uh, today, the iPad 2 has actually more Megaflops, and it costs 500 bucks. Look at the size of it, too, by the way. One of the slots of that, of the, this is actually a picture of that supercomputer. The whole iPad could slip in just one of those slots. That was essentially one of the ways to hold memory there. Huge changes happening in technology, the power. That's one thing. Second thing is the telecommunications revolution, particularly the internet. And to that one, you have to understand a second law, which is called Metcalf's law. Both these named after kind of key people in the valley. Actually, Metcalf wasn't in the valley. But um, anyhow, the point of this idea is he figured out, huh, the value of any kind of telecommunications network is equal to the square, essentially, of the number of users. You kind of just think of it this way. It's essentially an exponential. Anytime you square things, it's, it's an exponential growth. And the way this works is just in a practical terms. Is think of it this way. Think of it with just basic phone system. If you had the first phone in your community, it was worthless. You had to at least have two phones, right? Because you had to call somebody. Well, then let's say you had you know, your line to somebody, and then somebody on the other side, they can talk to their neighbors. Well, here's the thing. By just connecting one connection between those two people, you don't just add one new person, you add three new people. Boom. And then if you add another person, it's not just one person, that person, boom, can hit all those people. And ultimately, you just keep adding like this, aggregating these networks, and you essentially get this exponential value that starts growing as you aggregate networks. That's essentially, in essence, the power of the network effect in the internet. And that's essentially what's going on with the global internet. Now, this thing has been playing out initially with these kind of telephone lines, and then it was initially you know, the early you know, modems and bo baud modems and all these things you people remember from the 90s. It's now gotten to the point where we've got 2 billion people on the planet now who are online, 
And this is even more crazy. In the last 10 years, we have now got 5 billion people have cell phones on the planet. So three-fourths of the planet now is connected to this telecom network. And ultimately, as you're going to see later, the bandwidth of the, net, of, the tele, of the wireless telecom is getting bigger, and the power of these handheld phones is getting more powerful. So very soon, you're going to have almost every human being on the planet connected with very powerful computers in the palm of their hands for deep, dirt cheap, connected through this high bandwidth. This is a big deal. This starts to really get some crazy implications on the world. So if you look this way, people probably don't recognize this. Right now, if you broke down in the whole world, the region by the world of who's online, the first one here is North America, or the farthest one from here on both sides. Um, and of course, we got about 70, over 75% of our population is online. Europe after us, and you can see it going down the line. That group, by the way, Oceania is like, you know, the five islands in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, right? So they got a high level, but it's because they got like 500 people or something. <laughs> and if you were sitting on the middle of an, an island in the middle of the ocean, you would want to be connected to the internet, I'll tell you. Uh, but anyhow, it's pretty, look at this, all these regions of the world, the Middle East now, 30%, a third of the Middle East is online. Isn't that interesting as we kind of see the implications? Well, here, by the way, the blue is what it was at the beginning of the decade. So at the beginning of the decade, look at all those regions. There basically nobody in the Middle East was online, ten, just 10 years ago, and now a third of them. And yeah, look at every one of those regions, huge changes have just come in the last 10 years. And as I mentioned through the wireless thing, it's essentially going to wire everybody up in the next 10. Boom. And so what happens? The entire Middle East is exploding. And people are talking about why? It's because they finally have these tools that are just kind of extremely powerful to us.